New poll out of Arizonans, is that how you say that? Reveals that registered voters in the state have a much more favorable view of Arizona Senator Mark Kelly at 49% versus Senator Kirsten Sinema, who has only 39% of voters regarding her favorably. Mm. So according to this Ida Chavez at the Nation, Sinema's thumbs down performance on minimum wage, it hit a very sour note with many of her constituents. Democratic strategist and owner of JC Strategies, Jennifer Holdsworth Carp, and Senior Director of Policy at the Conservative Partnership Institute, Rachel Bovard. They join us now to discuss Jen, let me start with you. I think it's fascinating that Mark Kelly has a much higher standing than Kirsten Sinema in his in Arizona, given number one, Kelly has to run before she does, and seems to have taken a very different political tack in terms of how he sees himself on policy and on voting with the Biden administration. What do you make of these dynamics, given that Kelly does have to run so soon? I think that Senator Kelly's authenticity shines through, and Senator Sinema's absolutely does not because mm. I don't think it exists. I think that there's been a lot of flip flopping. Um, I think that a lot of her rhetoric has been disingenuous. Um, she has not stayed true to essentially what she campaigned on and how she even started her own political career. And I think we don't give voters enough credit for seeing that and acting on it. So um, I think that she has some time to rehab. The The thumbs down curtsy performance was mm. one of the worst I've seen in politics since I've been involved. It was <laughs> such poor taste. Um, I think it's gonna take a lot to overcome that. Um, so she has some time, but as of right now, there's a difference between what Manchin is doing in terms of explaining where he's always been, right? He's always sort of been this conservative Democrat, and by the way, has never actually voted against a Democratic policy when it would be the deciding vote. Untrue for cinema now, and that's something very hard to overcome. And I think she's going to lose a lot of national party support if she doesn't correct course. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're not going to find me uh, protecting or defending Joe Manchin a lot here, but you are right that he's been consistent over the course of his career of being having terrible politics and being a pain in the ass. Whereas Kirsten Cinema, Rachel, does seem to have undergone dramatic evolution. Um, if we could put that tear sheet for the nation back up here, I pulled this quote from her writing, you know, and when, when she was first getting into politics, this anti-capitalist, um, I think this was like an op-ed that was published in the local paper. She said, until the average American realizes that capitalism damages her livelihood while augmenting the livelihoods of the wealthy, the almighty dollar will continue to rule. It certainly is not ruling in our favor. I really liked that version of Kirsten Cinema. She also was an incredibly outspoken anti-war activist. She organized peace rallies. And then when she got to Washington, her politics completely flipped so that now, by some measures, she is the furthest right member of the Democratic Party. And to me, what these poll numbers show is oftentimes you hear from the commentary like, oh, well, she's just reflecting her constituents. It's a conservative state. You've got to understand that's why she opposed the minimum wage. That's why she opposes getting rid of the filibuster. Clearly, the constituents in her state do not feel the same way. Well, I think when it comes to the difference between Mark Kelly and Kristen Cinema, Mark Kelly hasn't done anything. I mean, I forget Mark Kelly's in the Senate. Has he even <laughs> given his maiden speech yet? Like, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, the, the way to keep your rating up in the polls is to do nothing. And that's, I think, the approach that he's taking. Now, Senator Cinema is taking the opposite. Right. And she's made herself she's put herself right in the middle of yeah. controversy. You know, but I and I do think there is something to be said for the fact that Arizona, you know, the type of politician she was in the House couldn't necessarily win statewide. And that's an experience that she had, I think, early mm -hmm. on in her career. And so there is some tracking to the center. And then I think there is something to be said also for the state of Arizona. I am not an expert on Arizona politics, <laughs> but they've always sent sort of quirky maverick senators to the Senate. They love mavericks and they hate moralizers. And that's why John McCain, for better or for worse, is still legendary in the state and Jeff Flake's career ended with a whimper. That's, so yeah. I do think, you know, she's put herself in a very powerful position. When we talk about wielding power in the Senate, a lot of it lies with Kristen Cinema, and, you know, she'll pay the price if it upsets her constituents too much, but they love when their politicians are in the middle of crisis. This is actually, Rachel, let me follow up there because I'm curious. What are, you, what are you hearing, seeing, et cetera, in terms of the GOP opposition to Mark Kelly? What they ran against him last time, Martha McSally obviously lost, not just badly, dramatically, um, when compared to Trump and other Republicans in the state. What are the, you know, there was some China stuff that they tried, but which just didn't stick. What would a successful bid against Mark Kelly or against Kirsten Cinema look like in such a dramatically changed Arizona? I think 
a lot of it is going to be base issues. I think it's going to be China. I think it's going to be immigration. And I think it's going to be the economy. I think these are three things that Mark Kelly hasn't necessarily distinguished himself on. I think Martha McSally was just a bad candidate. To yeah, be to be was. frank, I don't think she was flawed from the beginning, but I think you have someone that comes in and aggresses hard toward the base of the Republican Party on those three issues. I think the Democrats are going to have a hard time with that. Mm. Um, I do think, though, you know, Kristen Cinema is carving out a lane for herself to be someone that's taken very seriously. Um, you know, Democrat the, the progressive base of Democrats will not, but I think center left and you know center right Republicans look. They know Joe Manchin will always fold. Always. That's just how he does the job. It is less certain what Kristen Cinema will do, and that factor of unpredictability makes her very powerful and very attractive to some voters. Yes, yeah, she's very powerful, but like for the forces of evil. I mean, <laughs> like to what end, right? Yeah. I mean, any the, the fact of the matter is, with the Senate being tied, any one senator could wield that power for whatever ends that they want. It doesn't have to be against blocking something that is really popular and would help a lot of people in the minimum wage. I also disagree from my observation of Arizona politics. You know, I remember very well um, Mark Kelly's wife, Gabrielle Giffords, when she was in Congress representing a really tough swing district during the Obama era, very difficult time. She took that tough vote on the ACA and voted in favor, Jen. And she was one of the few Democrats in a conservative leaning district who managed to hold on. And I think it has a lot to do with what you said about authenticity. You know, people felt like, OK, you know, I may not be 100 percent with her, but she, I think she really is voicing and voting in a, a principled way that's consistent with her values. And they responded to that and rewarded her with another term in office. So I think, Jen, your point is maybe the most poignant one that, look, you might be able to just if Kirsten Cinema, you know, was naturally the sort of right wing person, you might be able to justify it. But it all seems like a show. And she wraps herself in this sort of like left affect and left appearance while voting in this very right wing ultimate way that is, you know, really damaging to a lot of her constituents. We also covered here, Jen, the poll. Sorry, I'm going on a rant. We covered here the poll also where they asked Arizonans, would you rather have the filibuster in place or be able to actually get stuff done? And the answer was overwhelming. So she is not representing the desires of Arizona voters right now. I think that she should look to my favorite senator, Sherrod Brown. I think that 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 is somebody who takes progressive policies and explains them in a language that conservatives can get behind because they know what he stands for. They know what he represents and they know that they can come to him and trust him to decide the right way on an issue that is going to help them, even in an overwhelmingly conservative state. I don't think anybody can argue that Arizona is any more conservative than Ohio. Obviously, they have completely distinct and different cultures. But this is a boat I think that she's missing entirely. She has the opportunity to shine through with her progressive values, but speak to her constituents in a way that McCain would be proud of. And she's not doing it. She's completely squandering the opportunity and is instead carving out this very strange quasi- conservative Democrat place in the party that is unwelcome on both sides. Well, we're going to find out pretty soon how well all of this is working. Guys, stick with us. Oh, actually, no, we will, we will see you all later. <laughs> Thanks, it. ladies. All right. Next, next on Rising, friend of the I'm show, Matt Carvey, is going to join us to discuss Biden's stimulus package when Rising returns.